This is Steps in Sharing the Gospel. Do you have a set method on how to share the gospel? It doesn't have to be difficult if you approach it in a systematic fashion. The work of evangelism is not limited to pastors, Sunday school teachers, or missionaries. As an ambassador of Christ, each one of us has an assignment to preach, declare, and share his message of redemption wherever we go. It is every believer's job to let others know that God loves them and has a very special gift for them. Now all these things are from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, 2 Corinthians 5.18. And to reconcile means to bring back that which was lost. You are God's mouth, hands, and feet in the earth, and he wants to use you. That's why we shod our feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace and why it's part of our armor. So what should we consider when planning on how to share the gospel? Here are a few simple suggestions to follow. First, keep it simple. Some people feel they cannot share the gospel effectively unless they have a lot of biblical knowledge or have been through some church evangelism course. That's not true but it's what the enemy would have us believe. Sharing the gospel should be just a natural extension of your walk with the Lord. Whenever we find something that's wonderful, we want to tell others about it. So just simply share what the Lord has done in your life. Share your faith. But be careful not to use religious terms that non-believers won't understand. We don't want to give the devil an opportunity for confusion, so keep your terminology casual and it will flow more easily and others will be more receptive. Secondly, let the Holy Spirit have control. We have to step back and allow the Holy Spirit to do his work. When you share the gospel, it will speak to the heart of the person you're ministering to. Never underestimate the saving power of God's word. It is a powerful two-edged sword and the spirit of God who convicts the hearts of men making them aware of their need for a savior. Hebrews 4.12 tells us, For the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two-edged sword and piercing as far as the division of soul and spirit of both joints and marrow and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Third, be sensitive to opportunities. You never know when the opportunity to present the gospel will appear. For example, you may be in line at a store, and as you begin to chat with the person in line or at the register, they may begin to pour their whole life out to you. Knock, knock. Here's an opportunity to share Jesus with them. Sometimes it may be helpful to leave a gospel tract with them, especially if you don't get a chance to give them the gospel, complete gospel. But just come up with a definite plan of action, your own method, so you'll feel comfortable because if you're not comfortable, the person you're ministering to won't be either. And when you establish a definite method and practice it, when the time does come, it will just flow right out of you. People are watching. On your job, there will be many opportunities to minister to your co-workers, but sometimes we don't have to say anything. When you spend all day around someone, you have more time to get to know or, or, or observe the person. And when we claim to be a Christian, others watch us to see if we just talk the talk or if we are truly walking the walk. Christians are to live in a manner that brings glory to the name we bear. We are to be living epistles, an open book that anyone can read and see Christ. They will notice you are different and may ask you questions and the door will have been opened. They may want to even talk with you outside the office or wherever it is you work. So go to lunch. Talk about their family. Get to know them. And if the opportunity comes up, point them to Jesus. Next, what to share. Whenever God presents an opportunity to share the gospel with someone who is open to it, here are some things to let them know. Let them know that God loves them. The most important thing you can tell someone is that they are loved by God. John 3.16 
Let them know that we all have sinned, and it's our sin that separates us from God. Romans 3.23 Let them know that God is holy and can't tolerate sin. He's assigned a penalty or punishment for sin, and that punishment is death. Romans 6.23 Let them know that there's hope only through Jesus Christ, who died in our place. 2 Corinthians 5.21 let them know that Jesus is the only way to heaven. John 14:6. Let them know that salvation cannot be found anywhere or in anyone else. Acts 4:12. Let them know there's nothing we can ever do to earn salvation. We can't be good enough. It's the free gift of God. Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 and 9. And lastly, be respectful. You may try to share the gospel to someone and they are totally opposed to hearing it. Don't get offended, but respect how they feel. It's just not their time. Continue to pray for them that the Lord will soften their heart and draw them by His Spirit. And at another time, God will send someone to speak to them again. If the person is ready to receive the Lord as you share the gospel, you can sense it. You can see a change in their expression, or you may see tears in their eyes. Or they may come right out and ask you, how do I receive the Lord? Pray right then for the person. Just pray as you're being led by the Holy Spirit. There's no set prayer. Pray that God would make himself real to that person. And then lead them in the sinner's prayer by asking them to repeat it after you. Here again, there's no set prayer. For scripture says in Romans 10:9 that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And in Romans 10:13 says that all who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's pretty simple. But here's an example of a sinner's prayer. Feel free to use it. Oh God, I know that I have sinned. I have tried to run my own life deciding what is right and wrong. I know I deserve your wrath and punishment and that I am lost unless you save me. I thank you for sending the Lord Jesus Christ to pay for my sin and guilt. I thank you for raising him from the dead and giving him authority over my life. I receive him as my Lord and Savior. I receive your free gift of eternal life in Christ. I will turn from my sinful life to serve you, my Creator and Redeemer. Amen. In Jesus' name. You may have other scriptures that you'd like to use in your gospel presentation. Many use a method consisting of only scripture from the book of Romans, and it's called the Roman Road. It's not important, though, what method that you use, only that you have one in place so you'll be prepared. Good soldiers are always prepared. And it's not necessary for the sinner's prayer to be long and drawn out. Just feel the liberty to pray whatever the Lord gives you. Always be led by the Holy Spirit, and you will see God do great things. Here's a good witnessing tool to share the gospel with others. You can begin trying out your boots by simply posting this video. You never know how the Holy Spirit will use it. God bless you.